welcome everyone to the book talk from United Library Services. Um, this is a webinar in Ontario Library Service North series on First Nation Library Services. Um, and welcome to you, Ren, um, and thank you for taking the time to, to do the book talk for us. I'd like, you to, I'd like to remind you that the session is being recorded. You can communicate as we go along by using the online chat feature. Just look for the speech bubble icon on the right side of your screen. You're also welcome to ask questions or comments throughout the book talk or towards the end. Um, we just ask that when you're not speaking to just mute your phone line by pressing star six. This eliminates background noises. Um, to make a comment or ask a question, just please press pound six to unmute your phone. So, Ren, I will pass it over to you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, thanks to those folks joining here. This is a... Uh, something I enjoy doing, giving book talks and the like, and, and uh, it's an excellent opportunity for me to be able to uh, reach more people and uh, tell people a little bit about United Library Services in, in, in terms of the types of books that we can access for you. So my presentation is across the board. I start with children's books, books and go right through uh, fiction and nonfiction to adult bestsellers and adult nonfiction, so it's a good breadth. Um, and we'll start with the picture books. So the first one I have is a book called Little Green Peas. Now, with my um, presentation, the, the PowerPoint slides are great because what they do is they um, give you the review journals that have give these title, given these titles a starred review. So in other words, in this one, uh, School Library Journal and Booklist have both acknowledged and recommended this particular book. Now, um, our selection team at head office uh, looks at these journals and in terms of assisting them to decide on what books they would want presented every particular term. And um, when I was speaking before the conference started, I want to be able to acknowledge two key people. There's Diane Langston at our head office who does all the children's selection and Nadia Fortuna who does uh, some of the adults. And they're the people that helped in this regard. So. The first book, like I said, is Little Green Peas. It is uh, by the author people may know, but they've also, uh, there was a book earlier, an alphabet book called LMNOPs, and it was very popular, and, uh, and this is now a subsequent book on colors. It's really, really simple, but it's a lot of fun. And so each opening page as you open it up will have a big, large word, blue, for instance, and then it'll go, uh, blue this, blue that, blue, and but and then it'll go, and little green peas. And it always refers to these little green peas, and you can see even on the cover here, uh, you know, they're skiing in this regard, or they're doing some activity that incorporates the color, or the materials they're using incorporates the color that they're talking about. So it's a very simple book, but I thought it was uh, certainly a fun book, and that's, I'm sure, why it was so good. So the next one now is called Quest. Now, you can see it's had a, a number of recommendations as well. And this is actually the second book of a trilogy. And the first one was a Caldecott honor winner called Journey. And uh, it's a wordless book. So um, it allows for a lot of imagination. And another thing that this book has is that they actually, the two boys almost draw themselves into the adventure. And, uh, and it's quite a quest, hence the title, for them to save the king in this particular saga. So it's, it's a good, unique book, too. Can I interrupt you, Ren? Sure. I have a question. So you said the first one in the series was Journey? Correct. Is it also a wordless book? Yes. OK, and so far there's just the two books in the series? That's right. OK, thank you. Yeah, they're looking at it being a trilogy, is what the author is talked about. So there would be another one coming. OK, thank you. OK, Library Book for Bear. Now, um, this is one it's, uh, I like it because it's, it's always a, a good book I find to have on hand is one that sort of uh, promotes libraries. Because essentially, in this particular title, the bear is one who says, you know, what do I need to go to a library? He's just not interested in the library. But he's finally convinced to go. And of course, what happens? He goes. He loves the library. He loves story time. He finds it all very interesting and inspiring and he comes home with an armful of books. So it's sort of that uh, 
classic one if you've got a young person that's kind of not sure or wants to get inspired. Here's a great one called Library Book for Bear. Here we go. Miss Brooks' Story Nook. Now this is uh, interesting in that it's talking about story time. But the twist in this particular book is that there's a storm and it turns the power off. So instead of being uh, story time, it's storytelling time because it's too dark to be able to read. And uh, so that makes it so that these kids have to create a story. And uh, the little girl in the story called Missy, she's dealing with um, a friend, Billy, who is continually bugging her by always taking her hat. And so she creates this story where ultimately she is able to uh, become a, a, a braver person and, and deal with Billy. So it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting yarn, but it's, it's just the fact that it's a way of uh, showing that you don't always get read, but you can actually tell a story too. That's what I was kind of... Now, Flashlight is uh, quite a unique book. Um, it's also a wordless book. There's not many here, but it seems good. But what makes this one particularly imaginative is that it's all dark, just like the cover, except for the beam from the flashlight. And within the beam, everything is in color. And it, it, it's a story uh, featuring and showing all the animals of the night. So you can see even on the cover, you can just see the owl. And, and so it's, uh, it's you, that's what's nice about picture books, is sometimes it, you're learning ways of doing art and illustration in addition to just the story itself. So this is, what, this is quite unique. Now, What If is by Anthony Brown. Um, I had the good fortune of hearing or meeting Anthony Brown and hearing him at a, a kaleidoscope conference a number of years ago. And uh, he's from England. He's uh, British. He's been uh, very well known. And he's won lots of awards there. And uh, his books are essentially international. Uh, and this now is called What If. And it's, um, it's a great story about a boy who's a little anxious. He's been invited to a birthday party, which is fine. But he's lost the invitation. And he's not quite 100% sure which home. And so he's not. He's with his mom. And he's going up to these houses and saying, nah, no, I don't think so. And he's a little bit anxious about the party itself and all that. But it turns out that all his nervousness, it works out. And it's kind of you know, going outside your comfort zone and being, uh, you know, feeling stronger from having, you know, dealt with this a little bit. So it's um, good that, you know, what if they don't like me? What if, you know, that type of thing. So there we go. Sleepover with Beatrice and Bear. Now, this is an interesting story. Uh, of course, uh, Beatrice and Bear are um, two really good friends. And they spend the summer, and they spend the spring, and the summer, and the fall together. But then when it comes towards winter, the bear, he's going to go hibernate. And uh, Beatrice, the bunny, says, oh, yeah, I, you know, I want to join you. you know. And so he says, I'm ready to go. It's going to be a, like a sleepover. Except, of course, it's a lot longer. And, of course, uh, <laughs> Beatrice says, I, 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 just, I can't sleep that long. I can't do it, type of thing. And uh, eventually what she decides is that she's going to enjoy all the winter activities that she normally would. But in doing this, she's going to create a scrapbook and then share it with the bear in the spring. So that becomes her sleepover. Yeah. Now we've got Big Bug. This now is an interesting book. This is one, um, it's all about scale. Because it, um, it starts off, even on the cover, you've got this big bug. But you can tell that it's just a ladybug, because then in the next page it goes, small bug on a big leaf. And then you would flip a page and it would be a small leaf in a big plant or a big flower. And it goes on like this, so you get this sort of big and small. So it's, it's um, a cute little story based about scale. So. Now we've got Pout Pout Fish Goes to School. And this now is a story about uh, this particular fish who going to school, a little nervous, of course, and maybe not doing so well. And so what happens is after a, um, 
a little bit of this story. She kind of goes, trouble one, I'm not smart. Trouble two, I'll never get it. Trouble three, I don't belong. So four, I should forget it. And she says, school is just not for me. But, you know, she, uh, she gets some extra help. She hooks up with other kids that are maybe suffering, or not suffering, but, you know, dealing with the, you know, challenges like that. And so at the end, she goes, fact one, we are smart. Fact two, we can get it. Fact three, we belong. And four, we won't forget it. And so it's, it's a good uh, story, again, about, you know, being able to, um, uh, you know, roll up your sleeves, work a little harder, address your fears, and, and, and be better for it. So good story that way. Rupert Can Dance. Now, Rupert Can Dance, this is um, a story about a little girl named Mandy, and she loves to dance. And, and, uh, and her cat, who is Rupert, just kind of watches her, watches. Mandy dances and never thinks anything of it. But when Mandy goes to sleep, Rupert's quite the dancer too, except he's a little shy and doesn't want anybody to know, but he dances and all that. But ultimately the secret's found out and there's a bit of a couple, but it all works out in the end. Because then Mandy and, and Rupert can both share their love of dancing. Am I talking too quickly? Is everything okay? <laughs> Okay, Hermelin, the detective mouse. Now, this one here is an interesting story. It's about um, a mouse who can read, a mouse who can type, and a mouse who can solve mysteries. And so Hermelin's able to help the community solve some crimes, except nobody really knows who Hermelin is. So the community decides to have this get-together or party to meet him and honor him. But of course, they all go crazy that they find out that he's a mouse. <clears throat> but it, you know, all is well and ends well. And it, and it, it actually reminded me of the um, there's a movie called Ratatouille. Just took some water there. Ratatouille. <clears throat> excuse me. Now, Ratatouille, if you remember in the the movie, was a mouse that was a chef, and 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 ultimately gets found out, and there's a, a, issues there. But this is the same thing, except Roman, of course, is a detective. So, good story like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, uh, Penguin in Peril. I guess we'll get to the next one here. Penguin in Peril. This is a unique story. You can see in the shadow, but there's these um, three cats, and these cats are hungry, and, and they've decided to have this master plan. And instead of always having to go get food for themselves, why don't we capture a penguin? And this penguin can become the fish source for them. And of course, that's the essence of the story, and there's quite a chase that ensues, uh, and it has a good ending. So. Winter is coming. Now, uh, this is different than anybody watching Game of Thrones. This is a different winter is coming. But this is actually a story uh, about a little girl, and you can see in the cover, she's got her little uh, notepad, and she is going into the uh, woods, and she likes to draw pictures. But what she's looking at is all the different ways the animals prepare in the fall for the imminent winter season. So, a story like that. No nap, yes nap. I think we've all either been there ourselves or seen this, but this is a basically a story about a child that would like to do anything or need some anything at all but go to bed or go for a nap. Okay, might want to drink a water, might want to have a story told them, might need this, might need that. And so this is like, you know, yes nap from the parents' point of view, no nap from the kids' point of view. Good little story like that. Okay, give and take. Now, this is an interesting story because it's basically this uh, farmer and he's got these two little um, men, one on either shoulder, and one's called give and one's called take. And I can't help but think it's kind of like your conscious, conscience, and so that you've uh, got these voices challenging his, the decision that he's making uh, in terms of good ideas and bad ideas. So, yeah. 
dinosaur versus school. Now, this is a, a, a clear parallel. This dinosaur is going to school. He's enjoying all the activities and meeting new friends and how teamwork can help to get jobs done, this type of thing. But it's, it's meant to be a real mirror of, of a little boy or little girl going to school and that you know they could see themselves being this dinosaur. And so it's that cute one about going to school and, and just, you know, especially if it's new for children as to what it's like. Now, Turtle Island, this is a story that's interesting. This is one where this turtle, and you can get an idea from even looking at the cover now, that the turtle basically is about the size of a house, or even bigger. But uh, he's in the ocean, and the ocean, of course, is really big. So even though he's as big as he is, he sometimes gets lonely on, when he's in the water there. But then there turns out to be this particular a shipwreck, and some animals actually end up climbing on board, and they survive by being on its back. But after a certain length of time, these animals kind of get a bit homesick, and they return to where they came from. And so the turtle says, oh, wow, you know, I just thought it was going to be great. And then he thinks that he's, you know, missed them all that. And what happens ultimately is that he looks out the horizon, and there's all these people that have been on him before, but instead they're bringing their families with them, and instead of just being a turtle, it becomes Turtle Island with these people living on it. So, kind of a cool story. Penguin and Pumpkin. Now, this is quite an imaginative tale. This is about two penguins that are kind of curious about what fall looks like, because obviously they're down in Antarctica, and it's, there's really, it's kind of like ice and snow, and, and so they don't really have a sense, but they're really curious because they've heard about it. So they leave on this ice flow, and they it takes them quite a long time, but they land in an area during harvest time. And of course, they see pumpkins and squash and everything like that. And ultimately, they make it their way back home. And when they were asked, like, what was it like? What was it like? They empty this big box on, on someone and said, it snows leaves. So instead of being snow, it's leaves. Lots of imagination in these stories. You can, I think it's always good to be, that's what picture books are good for. So Nancy knows. This is a story about memory. And Nancy the elephant goes about remembering things with her ears and with her stomach and with her heart, things like that, where she'll remember sounds or she'll remember taste or you remember people that you haven't seen for a long time. And then it also says that if, if you just can't remember something, just maybe chill for a sec and then it'll come back to you. So interesting perspective on them. So, so that's it for picture books. So now we're going to go on and we're going to talk about children, middle years, and young adult fiction. So the first one, we'll start sort of from the the younger titles. And this is uh, Leroy Inker's Saddles Up. And it's a really simple story, but it's a story about this fellow, Leroy, and his horse, Maybelline. And uh, that's it. Now, my new friend is so fun. Now, people may know about the Elephant and Tea books, because there's a number of them. But this is the new one called My New Friend is So Fun. And uh, this was an interesting one because it starts out with the two principal characters see, um, the two friends at least, they see their respective best friends connected together. And they think, oh, that's kind of neat. But they, they're kind of connected almost too well. And they said they kind of worry that maybe they're going to be best friends w w without us, and they're afraid they're going to lose them. But as it turns out, it all works out in the end. It's, they become a greater circle of friends. Yeah. 14th Goldfish, Believe in the Possible. Now, this is uh, for maybe about the grade 5 level, and it's a story, believe it or not, about immortality. And it's starting out with this goldfish that never dies because a lot of people, a lot of kids especially, they have a goldfish and they, they, they don't seem to make it. And so 
this particular one, he's like, wow, can you imagine? Believe in the possible. What if it? What if we live forever? That type of idea. Yeah. Okay, loot. How to steal a fortune. Now, Alfie McQuinn is a notorious cat burglar. And he's dying at the start of the story. And he says to his son, March, find jewels. And of course, everyone's thinking diamonds. But no, no. Turns out he's got a twin sister named Jules who he knew nothing about. And then it goes on. And Jules and March are quite a tandem. And uh, they go on to um, plan the biggest heist ever. And speaking of heist, here we have the great green heist, saving the school one con at a time. And this is uh, um, basically um, it's a story about the antics of Jackson Green. Now, Jackson Green, he's sort of your good-natured kid in middle school. He always, you know, he's always you know, scheming or creating havoc or something like that with the administration. So it's sort of one of those uh, characters that you uh, you're kind of appreciate him, but I suppose if you're an administrator, you might not. But if you're able to look beyond that, you realize he's definitely got a good heart. Okay, now we've got a few graphic novels. But Graveyard Book Volume 1. Now, um, this is an interesting one. It's a story of Bod, the yogi. And um, he looks at himself as being a normal boy. But then it, it's maybe not so much, because he lives in a graveyard, and he's raised by ghosts. Uh, good story for sure, but what's interesting in terms of the graphic novel aspect is that there are a number of different illustrators that do each chapter, so you get a, a different way of the story being presented. So, kind of a unique way in terms of enjoying that aspect of graphic novels. Okay, Shadow Hero. Now, Shadow Hero is actually based on an original comic series called The Green Turtle. And The Green Turtle was the first Asian-American superhero from 70 years ago. And the book itself actually has the original comic book in the back. From not physically, but story-wise, the, the plates and everything, um, from 1944. So it's uh, interesting how we're looking back and creating you know, new stories based on older characters. So nonfiction, elementary and high school. So Haunted Canada 4. This is the newest edition of a very popular Canadian series, and it's true tales of terror. So if people are wanting to get spooky stories, this is a good place to start. OK. I am Malala. Um, this is the Young Readers Edition, and that's the main reason. You know, the bestseller's been there, um, you know, for a little while now, and just to know that there's a, a YA edition, and this is particularly timely now, at knowing that uh, when they won the uh, award and so the, the Nobel Prize for Peace, so this I'm sure will be uh, popular and continue to be popular. It's a great story. Okay, Dog and Bear, Trick and Treat. Ah, uh, this is a Halloween book, the dog and the bear, and, uh, you know, they're enjoying Halloween and all the fun dressing up and enjoying the day and the like. And what's kind of interesting is that the dog dresses up like the bear and the bear dresses up like the dog, and so when they're knocking on the door, they go, well, you got to dress up for Halloween. We are. No, no, I mean, you got to dress up. We are. And then, of course, they end up pulling off their masks and they realize <laughs> they are dressed up, but dressed up like each other, I guess, isn't normally how it's done. Um, little Boo. Now, this is, um, this is a story about a pumpkin seed that wants to be like, you know, saying boo on Halloween, scaring people, right? But it's got to realize that it's got a long way to go. It has to survive the winter. It has to grow from a seedling. It has to develop as a pumpkin. And finally has to be carved into being a jack-o'-lantern. So it's kind of a, a story through the eyes of this 
pumpkin seed about you know all that's all that's required for a jack o' lantern to be made for Halloween. Little boo. Okay, Percy Jackson's Greek Gods. Um, this is basically, if you're looking for any particular um, compendium of stories and illustrations all about the Greek gods, including the likes of Zeus or Poseidon or Apollo and so on, this would be um, a good book to consider. Super Red Riding Hood. Um, these are good. This is kind of like your uh, fractured fairy tales. I don't know where you know. You, it, it, when you have a book like this, you're able to enjoy this book, but then you're also able to refer back to the original. And this one, instead of being just Little Red Riding Hood, it's Super Red Riding Hood. Because when this girl puts on her color red and dresses up, she becomes a superhero. And so she goes into the forest, and she's confronted by the big bad wolf. She's afraid, certainly, but she summons up the courage to say, hey, What's going on? Why are you so mean? And then it turns out that the wolf is just, you know, really hungry. And so they said, well, why didn't you tell me so? And so they share their lunch together, and all is well. So definitely a little twist on the tail, but, you know, good story nonetheless. And like I said, you can always refer back to the original. So here we have what's new the zoo. This is actually a history of zoos. And it goes right back to you. There were there's records of zoos being um, around quite a, um, like from the year 4000 BC type of thing. Uh, but it goes right through into modern times. There's reference to the San Diego Zoo because of the having the birth of a panda bear, or there's the uh, Woodland Zoo near Seattle. And I know they got uh, Metro Toronto Zoo is the same where they create all these natural habitats as opposed to having cages and and having drops in the landscape so you don't see fencing and the like. So if you're looking for you know, uh, a history of the zoo. OK, the next two are, there's two. There's one called the slug. And the next one, if I can get it going here, called the, whoops, oh, I went too many here, the rat. And uh, these are basically fun stories. And it's all about these disgusting creatures, they call them. And, and so if you're disgusting critters, and so if you're wanting, if, if the illustrations are great and the storyline's fun, but if you're, so if you're looking for, you know, a book on the rat or the slug or things like that that would be humorous and, and the like, this, that, this is where you go. Uh, any questions? Now, Marie-Louise Gay is a, certainly a famous Canadian children's book author. And uh, this book is based on her going out to different schools and meeting kids in that and having, you know, questions. Do you write all day? Where does the story start? Where do your ideas come from? Do you put a cat in every book? How did you learn to draw? Do you have a hamster? How many books do you make in one day? Are, are you Stella? All these type of questions. And so what this is about, though, is that she actually then creates a story about working with kids to make a story. So it's all about the writing process. And it's quite funny how these kids say, oh, you know, I think you should include this or that or this and that, and all these sort of choices and decisions. And finally, they get to the end and go, oh, I've had enough. And another one said, no, oh, let's keep going. I want to make it longer. So it's all about um, you know, storytelling. Any questions? OK, uh, on Remembrance Day, uh, this is a really good book if you want a book in your library on Remembrance Day. Um, what's nice about this is it starts right back um, from World War I to modern day Afghanistan. There's reference to you know, Flanders Fields, uh, various different war memorials, uh, Peace Tower in Ottawa, and certainly it's Canadian. It's not like Veterans Day that we have in the US. Family Romanoff, um, this is quite the story. Uh, you can see it's got five different stars, and it's really all about uh, the, 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 um, the whole Romanoff family and what it was like in Imperial Russia to then you know, the fall of Russia. So you've got that whole uh, life.
lifestyle rebellion and fall. And so if you're looking at anything, this is the best that this has ever been presented. Here's a photograph as well. Our flag. Um, our flag now uh, delves into the history uh, of flags, first of all, and how they've been used. Uh, the debate in terms of the uh, how they decided on the Canadian flag. It incorporates all the provincial flags. Talks about how you can send messages using flags, so it's quite a compendium of uh, history, at least on on flags and the like. So now we're going to switch, and we can uh, talk about some adult fiction. Close your eyes, hold hands. Now this is from the author of a book called Midwives, and it's. Uh, a story about a teenage runaway named, named um, Emily Shepard. And it's set in Vermont, and there's been this huge meltdown of a nuclear plant, and both her parents were killed. Now, her dad had been in charge of the plant, so she kind of feels a little bit in danger being the daughter of this particular person that has become the most hated man in America because of this huge disaster, and I guess obviously didn't work um, for the dad in terms of being able to manage that. So she takes off on her own, and she ends up surviving by just, you know, stealing or living on the street. So it's quite a story. It pushes a lot of hot buttons, like there's, you know, child homelessness, uh, mental illness, nuclear energy. So it's uh, quite the story. Okay, The Girl in the Road. <clears throat> now this is a debut science fiction novel. And it starts off, there's two women. One is named Mina. Now, Mina wakes up with snake bites on her. And you can see sort of the big snake on the cover here. And she realizes, you know, maybe somebody's out to kill her. So she actually flees from India, where she is at the time, and wants to return to Ethiopia, her place of birth. Now, the other person in the story, her name is Mariama. And she's forced to flee her home in Africa as well. Uh, in terms of, but she also wants to to go back to Ethiopia. So ultimately, these two adventures kind of intertwine, and it becomes a a, a road trip story with these two women. It's um, it's it's not Thelma and Louise, totally different, but uh, you know, it's, and it also has this very different futuristic look at Africa. Uh, after that now, we've got Earth Awakened. Now, this is uh, the third book in the uh, Formic Wars trilogy. And uh, it takes place 100 years before the best-selling novel called Ender's Game. The Skin Collector. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, this is from the author of The Bone Collector, which uh, became a movie with uh, Denzel Washington and Angelina Jolie. Um, the lead here from both stories is a man called Lincoln Rhyme. He's a renowned investigator, forensic detective. And he's back with this new particular thriller. Now, uh, The Skin Collector, here the victims are tattooed with cryptic messages using a tattoo gun loaded with poison. So it results in quite an agonizing, painful death, and it's essentially a race against time as they try and find this particular person. There are some references back to the bone collector, <clears throat> and it's in the works that it may be a uh, made-for-TV movie. OK, William Shakespeare, The Jedi Doth Return. This has been really interesting because this started out with a really a bestseller called William Shakespeare's Star Wars. You can imagine they're taking the Star Wars theme and and using the, all the Shakespearean language, and now there is also the Empire Strikes Back and this one, the Jedi, the Jedi Doth Return. So um, quite popular. I'm sure they're going to continue on with this if it continues the popular its popularity. And there's. Um, Apparently, it's also going to be a theatrical debut in Stratford at the Stratford Festival. 
Okay, your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? This is a mystery sort of spy novel. It starts out with this uh, person named Kev. He's a, a NASA astronaut, and he's been kidnapped and interrogated uh, by Thomas uh, and in this abandoned military base. And the story goes on from there. Walking on Water. Now, Walking on Water, this is uh, another uh, one of the walk series. It's, um, and it's an interesting story. It's basically a diary of this man. He's lost his wife. And he's essentially bankrupt because his business partner ripped him off of all of his money. So his, he does, he's lost his business and his wife. And he decides that, you know, I'm tell you what, I'm just going to find out in, about humanity. I'm going to walk from Seattle to Key West, Florida, and all he's got is a backpack on his back. So it's a really good page turner because you're always kind of wondering who he's going to meet up next or what's going to happen next. So he's, he's got something going here, and I can see that series going on for a while. Okay, The Truth of the Cave in the Black Mountains. Now this is really um, it's a, a haunting, dark sort of underworld story. Um, they're searching for this hidden treasure. You can even see sort of the, uh, from the cover there, with the skull in the background. Uh, it's set in Scotland. Um, I've got a note here that's interesting, that supposedly the narrative and the art were accompanied by live music uh, by a particular group called a four-play string quartet, and it was uh, performed in the Sydney Opera House. So it's obviously got a following, and uh, interesting how people have get into these different activities, you know, from having been excited about a book to start with. The Silkworm. Now, The Silkworm is a um, crime fiction novel. And for people that don't know, um, it's written by J.K. Rowling, who did all the Harry Potter books. But uh, she's now uh, writing this under her pseudonym, Robert Galbraith. And it's the second novel in the series of private, in, uh, like, a, and dealing with this private investigator named Cormoran Strike. And it's a sequel to the first book called The Cuckoo's Calling. Yeah. OK, The Confabulist. Now, uh, Stephen Galloway is a BC author, Canadian author, teaches out at UBC. And he's also the author of a bestseller called The Cellist of Sarajevo. And this is essentially. Um, a story about the life and the love and death of the world's greatest magician, Harry Houdini. So if there are anyone's interested in all that magic and all that history, that would be the book for you. OK. How are we doing for time here? I think we're just right on the money here. The Book of Life. The Book of Life now is um, it's the third and final installment in the Enchanting series. Uh, there's been some um, expression of potentially a movie option coming, or movie option at least coming up, but uh, nothing confirmed as yet. OK, this one along with the one following are probably my two favorite of all the adult titles that are recommended in fiction. The Pearl that Broke Its Shell is uh, quite an incredible story. It's set in Afghanistan in 2007. The Taliban rule the streets. And there's this family that have three daughters. And um, Rahima and her two sisters are rarely allowed to leave the house or attend school. It's just the way that whole Taliban operates. But they're, interestingly enough, there's this custom, however, called the Baha Posh, which allows a girl if there's no boys in the family, a girl to dress and be treated like a boy. And it turns out that this little girl, her great-great-grandmother, was able to do the same. And so it, the book interweaves between these two, two stories. And it basically, it's incredible. You get this sense of powerlessness at the start. And then there's a sense of fate. And then the freedom to control one's own life. So it's. Uh, Really quite the story. I think uh, anyone would enjoy that. 
Now the next one called I Am Pilgrim is my personal favorite. And it's also uh, a debut novel. Uh, Terry Hayes is a former journalist and screenwriter, but I really, really liked it. It's over 600 pages. I read this thing in about two and a half days. I couldn't put it down. Uh, it's got everything going for it. It's kind of like your Bourne book or uh, the Bourne series. Uh, this action um, starts off with this murder in New York City and ends up expanding to Europe, Turkey. Uh, there's two plots developing simultaneously. One is of a terrorist. He gets to know the background and history of this terrorist to get a sense as to why they're, why they're believing that terrorism is the answer. So you're somewhat sympathetic there. And then the other one is this retired CIA agent who's trying to track him down. I thought there was great character development. There's subplots. Um, and it's modern and up to date, both in the technology that they use and the political landscape. So if you like that type of book, definitely one to read. OK, the possibilities. This is the author of the best-selling book called The Descendants. And uh, The Descendants, you may remember, it was an Academy Award winning, winning film starring George Clooney. Uh, but this particular book now is set in Breckenridge, Colorado. And Sarah St. John, she's the principal person there, she's reeling from the death of her 22-year-old son who died in an avalanche. So this is a story about grief and relationships uh, and the resiliency of people that are forced to make some impossible decisions in the wake of a tragedy. The Matchmaker. Um, there's really not a lot to say about this one other than it's a very light summer read. <laughs> so if you want uh, that type of book, that's the one for you. OK, Summer House with Swimming Pool. Now this is by the best-selling author of a book called The Dinner. And the lead is a Dr. Mark Schlosser. And um, he's a surgeon. And unfortunately, he's had a famous actor named Ralph Meyer die on the operating table during a routine medical procedure. So everyone's scrambling to find answers. And then we find out that the families of these two respective people actually spent the summer, the previous summer together. And they witnessed this very violent crime. Well, of course, it turns out that this is all connected, and it proves to be quite the mystery and novel. OK, The Girl Who Was Saturday Night. Um, Canadian title uh, by the author of um, Lullabies for Little Criminals, which won a CBC Canada Reads contest. Uh, this one is set in Montreal, and it's about these two twins, Nicholas and Nushka Tremblay. And they're basically trying to escape the spotlight of their father, Etienne Tremblay, who was a famous Quebecois folk singer, but now is chronically getting in trouble with the law. Uh, the book ends up showing a little bit of the seedier side of Montreal. And uh, the story sort of pairs the vices of crime versus the ties of family. Uh, and just because of the history of this particular author and this title and the like, they're anticipating this being a big book club title in libraries. OK, The Bees. This is one where if you could cross Margaret Atwood's Handmaid's Tale and have it meet the Hunger Games, that would be sort of how you could describe this book. And uh, it's quite the story. And Anyway, it says that it implies that we underestimate the female species at our own peril. There you go. Delicious. Now, Delicious, this is another uh, fiction mystery debut novel. Um, Ruth Reichel it was the editor-in-chief of Gourmet Magazine. Uh, she supposedly has a huge Twitter following for her recipe haikus. And uh, she's also had two previous best-selling memoirs, one called Tender at the Bone and the other one called Comfort Me with Apples. And this, like I said, is her debut mystery novel. Accidental Apprentice. 
Uh, this is a good one. This is uh, by the author of Slumdog Millionaire, and uh, very obviously same author, similar styling, but this is a neat story in that um, it, this particular girl, she's just a shop assistant. Uh, her name is Sapna Sinha, and uh, she's invited by this CEO of a big business empire to say, look at, you know, I'm I'm just not happy with my staff or my family in terms of someone that really is the right person to take over my business and I'm wanting to retire. And he says, and he had just happened to be in the store and saw how she dealt with the situation, said that's the type of person I need. And so what he goes is he says, I'm going to put you through these seven series of tests. And if you pass those seven series of tests, you will, I will give you my business. And so it's quite interesting like that uh, where you find out that there's, you know, it's moral decisions and the like and you see some corruption in what she does, in other words, to finally get to the end. And it, it's, um, it's already been adapted for it will be a, a movie. So. Yeah. Adult nonfiction. Okay. We've got extreme means. Now, this is a Canadian author. She sits on the board of directors for the Canadian Journalists for Free Expression. And free expression. And this is now a uh, basically a groundbreaking expose on cyberbullying. If you want something like that, be the one. Think like a freak. Uh, this is a quick read, but I find that this is a classic type of book where I don't know if I want to buy that, but I would always say I want to read it. So that's where you can always go to your library to borrow a title like this. And it's really talking about just ways to be a bit more productive, be more creative, think more rationally, just ways of just thinking outside the box. You know, it talks about uh, you know thinking like a child or how to convince somebody that wasn't, doesn't want to be convinced. You know, just thought provoking. We have animal madness. Now, this is really a story about how uh, we can learn from, in this case, dogs. You know, our pets that thing, or elephants or parrots, by watching them and how they deal with some particular issues. We can learn and help ourselves understand ourselves. Hey, the skeleton crew. How amateur sleuths are solving America's coldest cases. Um, this is good because really what's going on, is it's about um, the Internet and how people are connecting on the Internet and they're able to match missing persons with these unidentified remains. And so, uh, you know, welcome to the world of Internet sleuths where uh, you know, people are, are curious and, and maybe find out information that the authorities aren't able to. So they're able to dig up all these cold cases. Okay, the Rustic Wedding Handbook. Uh, this is a great book if you're just looking for ideas for having your special, intimate, personalized type of wedding, as opposed to, you know, there's so much now, you know, the bling and the big hotel and all that type of stuff that people are fortunately, you know, looking ahead from their own. So unfortunately, they're looking away from that, and so this is one to just give people ideas on having a very nice, rustic wedding. A Wolf Called Romeo. Uh, now, there is a YouTube video. It's about 50 seconds long or so that you might want to check out on this one. Um, and it's a, it's a really um, true story about this particular wolf called Romeo that comes to it and always frequents near this man's cabin. And normally, it's, it's curious, obviously, but it's just that normally uh, wolves stay clear. And um, so it's quite the story about this particular unique wolf in that regard. Secret language of doctors. Uh, this is just one about all the different types of slang you can have within doctors. There's incarceritis or blocking or turfing or horrendoma and what these mean. Uh, you know, I, I can relate to that in terms of the uh, in the educational field. My wife was a teacher and uh, <laughs> used to have a term called HMPs, which stood for High Maintenance Parent. Sometimes they're just as challenging as the kids. <laughs> but so I can imagine that doctors have their own uh, slangs for various situations as well. 
So um, this is called A Dog Who Could Fly. Uh, it's a true story about this particular World War II. Uh, this dog um, was an orphan puppy, and this pilot took the puppy on and ends up going with him on all these different missions. And ultimately, the plane crashes, and the dog helps save his life. So it's always great when you get the true stories that are almost better than fiction. Um, I have a few cookbooks here now. Uh, these two are from Jamie Oliver. And instead of being so much him, it's his, two of his students that he had taught. And they've now created their own cookbooks. Um, they're very um, simple, but very well presented. Nice photographs, um, basic. Okay. Uh, next one here is called Berries. Now, Berries is a good one because it looks at all the different small fruits, um, all the different varieties, um, talking about the fruit itself, and then looking at the recipes that go well with each one. There's uh, great illustrations, great photographs. Paleo ice cream, 75 different recipes for homemade ice cream, including some that are dairy free. So you've got all your ice cream recipes here. Uh, the quick smart cook, uh, I enjoyed this one. I thought it was it was all sort of your feel good, whole food, comfort food type recipes, um, ones that I thought I could do myself, that type of thing. So. I'm hurrying a little bit here to be finished by noon, uh, or in an hour is what I'm saying. Uh, the Nut Butter Cookbook, 100 delicious vegan recipes made better with nut butter. So, recipe books are good to have, and it's nice to always have the specialty ones. Here's one from Weight Watchers. Uh, it has breakfast, lunch, and dinner menus, and they're either ready in 15, 20, or 30 minutes. So depending on what you want, it'll be able to help you out here, and they'll all be healthy. Keep calm and parent on. Now this one is, um, this of course is uh, the, the learning channel Take Home Nanny. That's who this is. And uh, it's about, you know, how to be able to you know, if parents are in control, you know, they can enjoy their children more. And so, you know, what could be more enjoyable than a well-behaved, respectful, healthy, thriving kid? So, good, you know, good ideas. Okay, the secret club that runs the world, inside the fraternity of commodity traders. Um, this is an interesting book because you, you, I always, you know, you, you think of this as like, um, people that you know are dealing with soybeans or copper and all that type of thing, these commodities that it maybe it's you know kind of dull, but that's exactly how you want how they want you to think. It's actually quite uh, multi. Oh, my phone's starting to beep that it needs recharging, so we're getting very close to the time here. <laughs> um, is anyone on the phone to be able to know? But uh, if I conk out, we're virtually at the end here. I can quickly go through. We've got the Holmes Manual uh, for in terms of being able to uh, deal with you know, contractors and how to help you with the building of your house and, and troubleshooting. Uh, this is one about doodling uh, crafts, how to make you know, dolls. Dorling Kinders, the books of great illustrations. Uh, Halloween spectacular, all things and activities, and to do all about Halloween. Uh, the sock puppet book. This is all about making puppets from uh, your sock. People might remember lamb chops. Uh, my phone keeps beeping, so I, I I'm not sure how much more time I have. Ren, can I just interrupt you for a minute? Sure. Maybe if we could just open it up to questions okay. or comments at this point. Sure, that'd be fine. Then what I could... I'm sorry about that. We were, I was kind of worried about it. But... I, I know. That's okay. Um, and then if it's okay with you, we could send this PowerPoint to them afterwards so they can see the last few books. That'd be fine. Absolutely. Okay. So um, if you want to unmute your phone if, you, if, sorry, phone, if you have questions or comments, you just press pound six. 
You can also use the chat feature if you have any questions. Or if there's none, we can keep going. Hi, uh, Sherry has a question. Hi there, Sherry. Go ahead. So if we order any of the books, what's the procedure? Um, well, you could probably work that out after, certainly. But uh, there is a, an order form that will be emailed to you with all the, the books and that. You can order off that directly, or you can certainly go on our website, which is uls.com. Okay. Is there any codes from there? Is this that um, we don't we wouldn't be receiving any bills? So how would the billing go? Uh, that's best answered by Karen Reed at Soul Sherry. Okay. So maybe we can chat about that after. Yeah, yeah. that would be great because I need to. Know. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Well, uh, all the ISBN numbers in terms of getting the proper book are on the order form, and then uh, in terms of your own, the way you need to do it, you know. We deal with all libraries across the country, so whatever works, it, I'm sure we'll be fine. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot. Is there anyone else who has any comments about some of the titles you've seen, or maybe some other books that you haven't seen and might have questions about whether ULS carries it or ordering questions? Okay. Oh. Oh. Was there a question? Yeah, Jason here. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, yeah, I already put an order in. Uh, a month or so ago. Uh, I'm just curious because uh, about 80% of the books I ordered are the show. I'm able to find them on the website. I'm able to order them, but they're not. They have to be ordered from the publisher or something. I was just curious. Uh, well, they, they, the website is like going on. Uh, we're a book wholesaler. We we aren't able to carry every single book that's on the website. I mean, yeah, understandable. And so, um, uh, so while it might be listed on the web. The, the um, they might not be ones that we would stock. The, these here that I'm speaking to you about today, we do have inventory of, so there wouldn't be nearly as you're not going to have that long a wait. Okay, but uh, the books do arrive though eventually. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, that's all I was. No, you're no worries that way. I mean, that's called being a jobber. That's what we do. People give us a book list, and we go get them. We have to contact the uh, the you know the publishers individually, and then we consolidate your order, and then we send it to you as one order. Uh, Sometimes people want to wait till we have it all together, so we just send one shipment. Or sometimes, you know, it can be longer if we send a number of shipments along the way. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm a little anxious here because I know my phone's <laughs> going to be conked out. So I want to thank you very much in case it just conks out before it happens. So. <laughs> Definitely, and we thank you too. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe do you want to just go ahead with the last titles, and then if you if yeah. you if you fall off the line, yeah. then we'll we'll. It over. <laughs> okay. okay. Anyway, thanks a minute again. So, um, all right. There, there are a number of craft titles, and so this one here now is on uh, knitting. And what's nice about this is it's called knitting reimagined, and so they're they're trying to bring some youthfulness and vibrancy to the uh, some of the projects that they have for people that might be knitting. Uh, little quilt. This is uh, this is an interesting because. It starts out with one woman from Australia and another woman from the States that are really interested in quilts. And collectively and through the Internet, they've been able to uh, create this uh, book on quilts. And it's step by step. So if someone's been wanting to try it, these are just little small quilts. It's sort of starter projects for people that might be interested. So, uh, this is a really good one, 500 kitchen ideas, style, function, charm. <laughs> Uh, you know, if people are looking for ideas, this is the one, um, you know, it's just it's a, a way of um, seeing different things that one might do. Uh, sextant. This is before GPS. This is all the history of this particular instrument and how it was used for exploration. And, and uh, so it's, it's really quite something about, you know, how people were able to do so much by using this and the stars. Uh, disobeying Hitler. There's a lot of talk about the French resistance, but this is actually talking about German resistance. And it starts off with this photo uh, from an, uh, that shows like all kinds of people going, Heil Hitler, and this one person in the middle with just his arms crossed, and how they, it was just quite amazing that someone would have the, you know, the guts to do that type of thing, and, and how there really was a German resistance, and they're finding out more and more about that now. 
Uh, dear leader, this is all about uh, North Korea. If you're wanting to find out an inside look about uh, from person, one person that was able to uh, escape about what really goes on in North Korea. Laughing all the way to the mosque. Uh, this is from the creator of Little Mosque on the Prairie, and it's uh, just a, a story again about uh, you know the interaction of the uh, the cultures and how, uh, according to the, uh, they're 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 not allowed to have meat, and so they they can go to McDonald's supposedly, but only if they have a McFish. <laughs> that type of story. Uh, now the last one is called forgiveness. This is quite a, a, a really interesting story about um, two families where uh, one is a, a Canadian family where the son goes to war in the Second World War and he uh, um, becomes a Japanese prisoner of war and eventually comes back to Canada. And another one is about a Japanese family who are in, in Canada who are in, deal with the internment and they uh, deal with that issue. So they're coming from two totally different backgrounds of the war. And as it turns out, their kids meet and fall in love. And uh, there's the whole sort of concept of forgiveness as they share in the joy of their grandchild. So, so that's it. I think I made it. You made it to the end. <laughs> Great. Well, I would like to thank you, Ren, um, and to everyone else who participated and calling, who called in. Thank you very much. I uh, hope the book talk gave you some ideas of what to purchase for, the, for your communities. Um, and I mean, this really just made the book come alive, you know. It just goes to show you really can't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> um, so I will be emailing participants a link to the online evaluation form for the webinar. Um, and for information on future webinars that we will be offering, just visit our web page um, on the webinars um, tab. And if, uh, please feel free to, if, there's, if you ever want to uh, contact the, the uh, on the order form is the uh, all the information to be able to you know connect with head office and and uh, or if you ever want to connect with me too, I'm always available to answer questions. So I'll be happy to do that. Excellent. Thanks again. Okay. Okay. Take care, everybody.